United We Om is a 501c3 nonprofit sharing accessible yoga and meditation with trauma impacted and under resourced communities. All of our workshops and trainings are offered by donation with no minimum donation. Your donation directly supports our mission of making the benefits of practice available to everyone. Thanks to supporters like you, we've continued to provide practice virtually throughout the pandemic. Learn more and support our work at unitedweown.org. Thank you. Hello, hello. Hello to the world. It's wonderful to see you all. Yes. Well, we don't see, see you. anything, but we imagine that we're seeing you. Theoretically. And we're thrilled. We're thrilled you're here because the today, amazing. oh my gosh, Silent one animal. of our favorite people ever, Tamika Albertini, is joining <laughs> us. Tamika is incredible. Every time we speak to her, we uh, get off the phone or finish our meeting and turn to each other and just say how blessed we feel that, um, that we know her. And we can't wait for all of you to know her if you don't already. Some of you might know her and get to hear some other things maybe that you didn't know before. She's a particularly inspiring woman in that every time we sit down with her, she's doing five or six new things that you're just blown away by. Yes. And she's just a powerhouse who's constantly accomplishing these things, which is something that's also amazing. Lots of people have great ideas, but those people who put those ideas into action and make great change in the world are the ones that we're super excited to talk to, like, like Tamika. Yes, yeah, so as we wait for the the internet world to connect us with her. Um, what's new? What's going on with United We Own, Matt? Well, we have an upcoming training, which we're gonna announce very soon, which will be our virtual training in June, January. Yay! Which will be a lot of fun. We'll be doing a couple of weekends and um, should be a wonderful thing. As always, by donation, no minimum donation. We're gonna be covering the spectrum of trauma, what that is and how to put that into application because we're all experiencing it right now in a massive way. It's a sort of a mass trauma occurring worldwide and hopefully be able to offer some more tools and resources that we can just use like in our every day, which I feel like I'm using four or five times a day, every day. <laughs> I'm sure that others <laughs> are nodding their heads in this present moment or in whichever moment you're with us here today. Which is always the present moment, right? Because even if you're watching yes. later, it's still the present moment for you. That's Just true. That's your present moment. What does live really mean? Is there really such a thing as now? It's a good question. <laughs> Tamika, save us from our... It's all now. Yes, for gosh <laughs> sakes. We got like, we were two minutes in here. And there's no time. But no, we're talk about, uh, tell about a couple of projects that we've got going. We've got a couple of cool ones cooking. Yes, yeah. Well, um... Something that um, I think we'll probably be able to talk with Tamika about today are the um, initiatives that we've been working on um, since we've had the year to brew some um, new approaches to the work, not only based on COVID, but also just based on what we've learned over the first six years is really impactful and how we could hone in and use this time that has certainly been different to ask ourselves what could we do that would be a new programming that we would be excited about. So we have one that we're, I think I'm sending a newsletter out about it tomorrow, uh, which is a yoga for breast cancer healing initiative, which we've been working on with the incredible Elise Newhauser. She was in a previous podcast with us. Um, she's amazing. And I think she's just finished filming her last section. Sure did. And I'm, I just can't wait for that one. It's a self, beautiful, self-paced. Hi, Stephanie! A beautiful, self-paced um, series that speaks to all different aspects of the journey, as Elise calls it, from diagnosis of breast cancer all the way through to um, after surgery or treatment and healing. We love you too, Stephanie. We love you too, Stephanie. Stephanie. You Ooh. inhaled like you had something to say. I love you, Stephanie. Oh, well, yeah, we'll always stop whatever we're doing to say that because that's important. So that is, um, that's going to be announced tomorrow with a link in our LinkedIn on Instagram where you can sign up so that when it's released and finished and polished and beautiful in a few weeks, uh, you can get it in your email and share it with anybody in your life too uh, that it might serve. Oh, I see, I see somebody up. amazing. I see many amazing people. 
and one who we are here to talk with today. Hi, Manny. Hi, Leah. Waving to the void. <laughs> no, they're not the void. No, this is beautiful. We can all stay connected like this. Ba 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 ba. Da 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 da. Yes! Hi, nice family! How are you? I love I your hi. Thank you, thank you. How are you all doing? Some of my favorite people. We were just saying that. I'm glad you gave us a few minutes because we literally just gushed about you for a while. It was nice to get it out of our system. <laughs> And I should have mentioned before saying what an incredible person you are, how amazing you are. Also that you are so always like look looking so like an art piece and so beautiful and expressive. <laughs> and I'm just always happy to see you too. Yay! <laughs> thank you, thank you. It's just a reflection of you all, of course. <laughs> you always slowly learning that. that, right? The outside world. <laughs> go out there so I yes we're, we're, we're all connected we're all connected <laughs> yes yes so speaking of all connected how are you how are you doing during this time of social physical distancing and the world being so separate it feels like in so many ways yeah yeah it's been quite a shift I'm sure for everyone in different ways um it's so, it's so funny because when people ask these type of questions you think about the folks who are introverted and the folks who are extroverted the folks who are introverted, they're like, oh, it's a piece of cake. I want to be alone and I want to be indoors, so it's fine. But you think about the folks who are extroverted, they're like, I need friends. I need to be around people. And so I'm a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. So um, it's been a trying time simply because I do have a business that requires physical in-person sessions. And um, I have two companies. I have the Sacred Color Healing, and then I also have a children's company. So the children's company has suffered in regards to not being able to offer any face painting, not to see the smiles on these children's faces. Like, that's what brings me joy. And so I had to find joy in, in shifting that aspect of it and just moving towards, um, you know, making sure that my company, Sacred Color Healing, was receiving a lot more love um, so that I can do the healing work, right? So but you yeah. opened, I want you to talk more about it because yeah, during this time, Matt was just saying something we love about you is like a lot of people have ideas, but you have ideas and then you get in there and you, move. You, make, you manifest them, you make them happen. And we know that's not happened overnight and just easy. <laughs> And it's, we would just love, I know we would just love to hear more about, I know you have a new space and you're growing this beautiful thing. Please tell us about it. Yes, of course, of course. So it's funny how you said that because everyone who knows me knows that, that that's my mentality. Like I'll have an idea and I'm like, oh, we should do that. Um, but what I had to learn is that not every idea that I have needs to be executed. Sometimes... <laughs> To its those, fullest fruition, yes. I'm telling you, sometimes those ideas actually uh, brings you to other ideas that are a part of what you're currently doing, right? But this is why being in, um, tapping into your intuition and tapping into um, your divine higher self will help you along that journey if you are someone like me that always wants to do so many things, right? But it all connects down to healing, right? I, I love to help people. I love to watch people flourish in their joy. And, you know, I try my best to, to be that way and exude that so that whatever I am um, exuding in the presence of anyone else, that that's what I'm giving off. I'm not giving off anything negative. I'm not giving off any type of um, anxiety filled um, things that I go through. So I, I try my best to um, tap into my higher self in order not to give that off to other people. So that brings me to talk about um, Sacred Color Healing. So Sacred Color Healing, um, it was founded in 2018. And um, it's basically self-explanatory, right? Healing with colors. Um, so I am a holistic wellness consultant and I offer uh, holistic wellness consultations. I also offer readings, chakra work, um, color therapy, 
and womb healing for women. So all of these things, although they seem to be, I wouldn't say separate because everything is connected. Um, there are different categories, but at the same time, they all involve colors. And how can we use colors in order to heal all these different aspects of our mind, body, and soul, which is all connected? And so I offer detox programs. I offer uh, programs to help women to tap into their sacral chakra, into their womb. And I also work with men and women so that we can realign your chakra centers and get you under that crystal light therapy bed that I have in order to help you, um, you know, with sound healing, with meditations, just being still, right? Uh, sometimes we don't know how to do that because we're doing so much, but these particular services that I offer, it gives you a moment to just be still and connect with your higher being. So again, even though they're different categories, um, they all fall under the same umbrella of healing and using colors to do so. I have so many questions. Me I don't even know where to begin. Bring so it on, start, bring it on. Let's walk it back, like <laughs> yeah. talk to me like I'm five and, and, and help me out. Talk to me about the colors and what and what does each you know? Let's just go through like the Roy G. Biv, right? The the top mm -hmm. the top seven. What do those colors do? How do they affect me? How can I utilize them? I'm I'm ready. Got it. All right. Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. Yes. <laughs> so with the colors, um, when we think about colors as a child, you think about the rainbow, of course, because you know you always think about you know the colors that you learn, your primary colors in art class or the colors that you have in your classroom, right? But as we get older, we don't necessarily think about how these colors have affected us or how they're affecting our emotions, our mental state, or even our physical state, right? So I, before I break down each color, I just want to talk about what is color, right? Because we see color, obviously, right? But everything is a vibration and everything is energy, so that's all colors are. We see a vibration, right? Red is not necessarily red. We just made that word up to give it a title, right? Or a label, right? So red is a certain vibration. And whatever vibration that it gives off to us, that's what we feel. So think for a moment, and everyone even on this live, think for a moment, how do you feel when you see red? Red is a very stimulating color, yeah. right? So when you see someone that has red on in a room, they're going to stand out the most because it's just that type of stimulating vibrating color okay mm -hmm. so the same thing like green I'll use green as an example green is in nature right you see it everywhere in nature right what happens when you go to a park or when you are in a forest or when you're when you have plants in your home right you think about how you feel when you're around this particular color or I shouldn't say even this color the scenery or this environment that has this color okay mm -hmm. it gives off a more calming, soothing, balanced, um, um, joyful feeling, right? You, you're always happy, right? Whenever you go to the park, whenever you're in nature, unless you're not a nature person. <laughs> <laughs> but if, if you are, these are the type of feelings that you get whenever you are in this environment. And so that color green, that's the energy and the vibration that it's giving off, okay? Now, when we talk about colors, colors cannot be seen if we don't have any light so the important thing about colors wherever you see colors right your skin your your clothes the environment that you're in if there is no light you will see black you will see nothing but black right so the color black is what um takes in all the colors right it sucks in all the colors the color white it exudes all of the colors okay so I, I, want, I want you all to keep that in mind as I'm like going over the colors, okay? And so um, the color, the way that the color uh, affects us is how we see it. But even if someone was blind, they would still be able to feel the vibration of the color. Mm -hmm. And that's where the crystal light therapy comes up. That's where the, um, the, the lights, the, the light LED light colors come up, right? Um, for example, when you are, let's just say you're experiencing some skin issues, right? Um, I'll use the babies. I'll use the babies who have jaundice as an example, right? So children who are born with jaundice, you know, they, they develop our, jaundice. Our son, had our son that. Dylan had jaundice. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So did he go under a blue light? Yeah. yeah. The, what was it called? The Burberry light? Or uh, yes. Um, something the, like that? Yes. Okay. You know what I mean. So, yeah, the light. <laughs> 
so even just that, if you are not a believer in how colors affect you physically, that is a perfect example of how a blue light penetrates the skin, right? The different layers of the skin. And it's able to heal you and heal your cells because of the vibration. Okay? I never made that connection. Incredible. Thank you. Yeah, because it's, again, it's light exuding a specific type of vibration, which is the vibration of blue right mm -hmm. and that's what heals so the same thing with red if you have like any acne issues using red actually helps to stimulate your cells so that's why you'll see a lot of um uh maybe like skincare uh companies who you who offer facials and things like that and they'll have like a red mask right one of those like led light masks like the light i've seen that. yes yes yeah. so that actually helps with your skin because it again you have different layers of your skin and different colors actually penetrates different layers of your skin. So you have your red, which is on one side of the, the spectrum. And then you have your purple, your la not your lavender, um, like your purple, your indigo colors, your darker colors. Um, that also maybe is it goes deeper into your skin, like infrared light. Mm. Okay. So I, mean, I can't go into all of that. I would love to, but... <laughs> We don't have yeah, no, it's fascinating. <laughs> this is amazing, but... Tamika. This is amazing. <laughs> yeah, so those, yeah, go ahead. I was just going to, I'm just, because I am lit up by this. How, <laughs> if somebody couldn't get to your center, how could somebody start to, let me ask in terms of like, maybe let's, let's say like anxiety, which is something that um, stress and anxiety that a lot of people are experiencing and a lot of people we serve together who have experienced trauma generally are feeling, what is a way that somebody experiencing anxiety or chronic stress could integrate some color therapy for themselves at home? That's an amazing question. And, and this is why I feel like it's so important to know how the colors affect us because then you'll know which colors to actually use for that, okay? Mm -hmm. So when, when you're experiencing anxiety, it's a nervous system reaction, right? So your nervous system is just not steady. And if you use particular colors, it will actually make your anxiety worse. So we'll go over what those colors can be. So we'll start Wait, with the color. Get me a piece of paper. Hold on. <laughs> so the color not to use when you have anxiety is red. Why? Because red is a very stimulating color, right? You use colors like red and orange when you need some type of stimulation. So that's when you're like depressed, right? When you're unhappy, when you're sad, when you're, you don't want to get out of bed, right? You add some red to your life, whether it's the red foods, whether it's um, maybe some red in your bedroom, red clothes, put on a red dress or red shirt or something, right? Incorporate those colors. Um, or you can do like color meditation, like a red color meditation. You can do um, any type of uh, uh, stim eye stimulating effects where you look at the color red and you just stare at the color red. That'll give off the vibration to stimulate you. Now, the color to use for anxiety would be colors like blue, green, um, and sometimes yellow. Mm. And I say those colors because, again, we have two sides of the spectrum for colors, okay? You have your, um, your warm colors and then you have your cool colors, okay? So your warm colors are like the red, the orange, the yellow. Green is always neutral and it's balanced. It's a balance of the colors right in the middle. And then you have your cool colors, which are, which are uh, blue, indigo, and like purple, okay? So when you are experiencing anxiety, you want to use the cool colors, okay? And think about this. Think, think about anxiety. When you have anxiety, you think about yourself being hot, right? Yeah. Or, or over, um, you're overthinking, right? You're like overstimulated. Mm -hmm. And so you want to use something to just cool yourself down. And so that's a be the best way to think about like what colors to use is if you understand the color spectrum. Okay. So not, I would say don't use a lot of blue because bl too much blue can actually be, um, too depressing. <laughs> for you. Mm -hmm. So when I say that is, um, if you have anxiety, if you, ha if you have depression, if you have sadness, blue is a good color to use as a starter. But if you have too much of it, what it's going to do is it's going to, um, it's going to keep you uh, in, a, in a low vibration, right? 
it's going to keep you stable in that in that space but that's not what you want you just need something to boost you a little bit mm -hmm. and get you out of that state right mm -hmm. um the color green is actually perfect for anyone who experiences anxiety too much green is never enough <laughs> you well, think, all green. <laughs> do you think that there's a connection there um between being you know in nature as like a healing modality for stress and trauma and green as as the color and it's and it's effect do you think that might be one piece of that puzzle oh for sure that is for sure. so yeah, cool. this is a reflection of the world around us that it's makes amazing. a ton of sense that yes yes it is okay. out, the, the all pervasive color blue and green right the, yes the, yes yes and it's so it's funny how you say that because the color blue and green um Think about the companies that you see that have the, these particular colors in there, okay? Blue and green are like the colors of wellness, if you really think about it, right? Mm -hmm. And so if we are talking about wellness in that aspect, um, I stopped by a Rite Aid uh, that was in Brooklyn, and I saw that they changed their color to blue and green. And huh. I was like, oh, interesting. I don't know if all the Rite Aids did that, but that one in particular changed their logo to a blue and green color. And then all of a sudden, I just started seeing them everywhere. All Every store that I went to, I'm like, oh, okay, there's a wellness company, blue, green, another wellness company, green, and so on and so forth. And I started realizing that, okay, this is a time during this pandemic that a lot of folks are seeing that wellness in the mind, body, and soul mm -hmm. are extremely important. And so changing your logo for your company, and, and when you think about how people find you, they look at your logo, they look at the name of your company, and that color is going to draw them in. You don't want to draw someone in with the color red. Why? Because we're in a mm. pandemic. Everyone is anxiety filled, <laughs> right? We're all going through overstimulating everything, e emotions, uh, mental state, physical state, you name it, we're going through it. And so you want to put colors in your company logo that are inviting to people and that are going to make them feel like, um, like we're here for you. Right. It's, 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 it's a statement that you're saying when you're, you, when you're using particular colors in your logo. Um, I'll use your logo as an example. To say I'm now I'm running through my mind. We, we need yeah. Green. Yeah. Let's talk about your logo. So your logo has a uh, purple and I see some blue in there as well. Mm -hmm. Right. There's a little. And then there's, a, there's a little. Yeah. There's a little hint too, also of the of some pink. You know, some some sort of red in the heart. Yeah. So we have pink. We have um, the purple, and then we have a little bit of blue. Right. Mm -hmm. There's right. some blue. Teal. Here, show her. Teal. So teal, so teal is actually blue and green. <laughs> There we go. Thank you so much. Okay, there we go. So look at okay, so you have white, you have um a purple, well purple slash indigo, and then you have a teal, which is like a green and blue, right? And then I see like a, a purple moving into like a pinkish color. Okay, yep. thank you so much. <laughs> thank <laughs> you. So with your colors, um, you have more of the cool colors. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, you have the colors that are from the heart center on up. So you have mm -hmm. the teal, which is like a green and blue, right? And the green and blue, it deals with, um, well, green, let's start from there. Green is all about your heart center, right? Reciprocity of love, exuding love. And you guys do that so well. <laughs> so that's Working green. On it. <laughs> it's green but then you have pink in there which is also associated with the heart center right mm. and so all of that is about forgiveness compassion um reciprocity of love and your company really does exude that right and then we have blue which mm. is communication communication is all about how do we communicate right um listening right listening and also speaking how, how is that a balance for us and of course you I mean, that your line of work, you're always talking to people, but you're always um, giving off inspiration and affirmations to those who need it, right? Um, even the yoga that you provide or even the services that you provide, it's all about communication. And you all, I mean, through email, through phone calls, through Instagram, you all are on it. And that's what I love about the, you guys, because you guys are consistent with your communication, which is awesome. Like Jen will, Jenny will call me and she's like, hey, we haven't spoken in a while, but let's get right into it. And, <laughs> and, and it's like we, even though we didn't speak for like a few months, like we, 
we communicate and we connect on a deeper level like we spoke yesterday you know so you you all give off such a loving vibe with your with what you guys offer in your company but also with the colors that you use um and then you have the indigo and then you have the third eye now the line of work that you do is healing right it's all about tapping into your higher self so when you think about the third eye the third eye is all about intuition right tapping into your intuition and um your higher guides right your spirit guides um tapping into um trusting yourself and trusting who you are as a person mm -hmm. um but then the crown chakra is all about your connection with everything your connection with the universe and if you think about the universe in your logo you have um what looks like the universe right yeah. so it, it it all coincides together you know making sure that you're tapping into nature you're tapping into your spirit guides you're tapping into your ancestors um but you're also comfortable in your own skin and you're comfortable in who you are and what you're offering to the world um as far as your purpose wise and i feel like what you all do you offer that you offer the services and um the compassion and the love behind it that helps people to find their purpose in this world which is what we all need we we all need the the people like you the people like me the people like the community that we have in order to push that out of them let's let's get people to understand their purpose so that they can continue to exude love in this world yes it's not going to be a perfect world yes we need a balance of the low vibration and the high vibration but guess what the low vibration does it reminds us of why we need to continue to stick with the high vibration because when we start to go lower, right, we are depleted of what we can offer to ourselves, our family, our friends, and to the people that we work with, right? So you're not always going to be aligned. Your chakras are always not going to be aligned. But the point is to recognize when it is out of balance in order for you to use the tools and the resources that you've uncovered or you've um, been given or you've discovered, you know, within yourself um, in order to get back to that state of mind to keep you going and fulfill your purpose. On fire as oh usual. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I know. I saw Carmen write like, this is so cool. I'm going to have to rewatch this with a pen and paper. Like I'm <laughs> over here taking notes. Oh, nice. <laughs> I, okay. Like Matt, I still, I have so many things I want to hear you talk about because I love hearing you explain things you're so brilliant at it and a word that has come up a lot since we started talking is intuition mm -hmm. and I would love to hear what intuition means to you and what its importance is to you and and how you feel it could be important for all of us love it. yeah yeah that's a great question because everyone has their own perspective of what that means to them mm -hmm. And so when I think of intuition, I think of your inner voice, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone has this inner voice within them that tells them to go left, go right, don't do this, do this. And everyone has it whether you want to believe it or not, right? We just put a name to it, right? Because we, we're human, so we have to label things, right? So for me, intuition is all about um, tapping into that inner voice and trusting that inner voice the moment that you're able to trust that inner voice it'll help you and guide you to where you have to go in this world because everyone has a purpose and I know some people may think oh I don't have a purpose I don't know what I want to do with my life you have a purpose you just haven't discovered it yet right mm -hmm. so in order for you to, to discover it you have to listen to that inner voice well how do you do that you have to not you have to I don't like to use you have to there are ways that you can tap into that inner voice by meditating. You can also exercise and do some yoga work, but sitting still with yourself. And whenever I say that, they're just like, and do what? <laughs> you know, what do we do when we're sitting? It's in those moments of stillness that answers start coming to you because our brains are not like everywhere, you know? Mm -hmm. So being able to sit still, put on some really good, you know, nice, calm music that you love listening to. Doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be meditation music. It can be anything that brings you into a calm state and just start thinking about the things that you love. Think about the things that you want to do or love to do or what brings you joy, right? And that'll help you to go to different realms of where you need to be, which will lead you eventually to your purpose. So intuition is all about that inner voice. 
that inner voice tapping into it, um, trusting it, loving it, right? There, mm-hmm. there are different ways to honestly honor your intuition because, you know, you think of your intu- think of your intuition as like, um, like a, a best friend of yours, right? If you think of it like that, then you'll know, okay, well, this best friend, you're not going to harm, you're not going to um, make them feel bad, right? You're always going to try your best to love upon them. And, you know, or a family member that you might have, right? Your, your, your intentions are never to necessarily hurt them in any particular way. So your intuition tends to feel like that too. When you don't listen to your intuition, your intuition is pretty hurt. <laughs> it gets into a state like, well, I told you, but you didn't want to listen to me. And if you keep on doing that, it's going to come to a point where your intuition is just going to be like, look, you're going to go through what you're going to go through. And then yeah. when you're ready, I'll still be here. Because your intuition is never going to go anywhere. Never. <laughs> it's always going to be here. So it's up to you whether or not you want to connect with it or not connect with it. And usually when we don't connect with it, we become lost. And yeah. when we become lost, it's just like that's when it leads to depression. That's when it leads to anxiety. That's when it leads to all these like lower vibrational feelings and energy. And so, you know, it, it, it makes sense for me, at least, to connect with your intuition, connect with that best friend, because that best friend is going to take you to so many amazing realms and so many different places that you are not even aware of yet, but because you haven't tapped into it yet. So connect with your intuition, folks. And if you need ah. help, con- contact us. You know, contact United We Own. They offer so many different services and so many different folks who uh, you can connect with. You can also contact me. I can help you, you know, to find your purpose or help you during your meditation. There, we have a community of folks that can help you to tap into your intuition. So it's there. And your intuition <laughs> yeah. itself will, you, whatever one you're resonating with, whatever vibration, whatever that intuition is telling you, that is what that next step is. I always had the same thing. You brought it up earlier in the conversation of like, because I'm the same way. Like, I'm like, let's do it. I have this idea. Let's go. Let's try to go forward. I'll, I'll, let's call some people and figure this out. <laughs> and what, I have, what I've come to find, I think, is that that impulse, that intuition is not, it, it's a guide. It's a road. It's, a, it's one leads to the next, leads to the next. And all this, although this business may not come to fruition or may even fail, and I may experience loss and upset and disappointment, that when I look back, you can see that following them really has been like a guidepost. And that one joyful moment has led to another, has led to another. And boy, when I have not followed my intuition, has it been ever so painful. Yes. So I, I, I love that idea that you said, like one to the next, and it might not be that you're gonna to get to the finish line on this one. You might just be learning how to sprint, which you're gonna need for coming up on the mountain that you're unaware of yet. <laughs> I love that, it's beautiful. Yes, that is so true, Matt. That is so true. And I, I really, and I, I, I do this work because I really want people to get to that point, right? We all have been there where we're like lost and confused and trying to figure life out, right? We're still figuring it out, right? But we're not in a state of loss in the form of not knowing where we want to go, right? We know where we want mm-hmm. to go now. And so we just have to do the work and put in the action to get there. But there's going to be bumpy roads, no matter what you do, right? You cannot control everyone else. You can't control this universe. You can only control yourself. And that's it, you know? So how specific do you get in your process? So great. As you're, as you're moving down towards this, towards this goal, right? You're, you're going on the journey. How specific do you get? And when does that specificity increase? Or do you sort of back off and go general? Yeah, that's a great question, Matt. Uh, let's see. Because I am, I have an entrepreneurial spirit and I'm like, this would be a good business. This would be good. This would be, I'm always like that. Right. I'm like, well, maybe I should get into like the business of like selling these ideas. Right. That was like <laughs> one, one aspect. Cause I'm like, people make money doing that. I don't like, look, you know, maybe I should do that because they, they're always coming. I can't stop them. Okay. <laughs> so, I get it. but I had to learn control. It's all about self control and also discipline. If you have those two, if you actually, if you don't have those two things, then everything is going to be scattered. You're going to start something and you're never going to finish it. Right. And I think that's what, that's what I learned is that I started um, thinking about all these like business ideas and I would start it, but then I would never finish it. And that taught me a lot about myself, not necessarily about just 
you know, these are brilliant ideas that I may have that may sound brilliant to me, but may not, you know, be to another person. But if I am not disciplined and I can't control um, those particular urges, then that'll be a disservice to me, right? Not to anyone else. And so I would say to myself, okay, if you started this project and you did not finish it, is this something that you need to work on right now? Is this a part of your purpose, number one, right? I always ask myself that question because I want to, I want to live my life and I also want to have a, a lifestyle of entrepreneur business that contains and, and focuses on what my purpose is, right? That involves my purpose. So I would ask myself that question. And if it doesn't, I say, okay, well, let's put it to the side. And if I never go back to it, then that's okay. But what I find is that those ideas would actually give me other ideas for what I'm currently doing, right? So it yeah. always leads to somewhere. I don't think the ideas that you have leads to nowhere, right? But they're like stepping stones, right? You think of something, okay, you may not have to use this particular um, idea to create a business, an LLC, and <laughs> all these different things, but maybe you can incorporate it in a program that you have, or maybe you can incorporate it, um, you know, maybe you're having a conversation with someone, and, you know, whatever idea that you have, it might work best for them, right? Mm -hmm. So sometimes that happens, and I'm like, you know what? You cannot hold on to things, right? You have to learn how to sometimes let things go, and I used to have such a problem with that. You know, when I would have these ideas and I'm like, I don't necessarily want to give this away to anyone because I want to do it. Right. And I'm a Leo. So Leos are very territorial and, you know, we want to hold on to everything. So I had to learn, you know, Tamika, if this conversation comes up and this idea is actually good for this particular person and their business, then just let it go. Right. Mm -hmm. Whatever is for you will always come back to you no matter what. So even if this idea comes back to me and I want to you know, create something out of it. It's my energy. It has nothing to do with anyone else. And it's not connected necessarily to anyone else because it's what you're putting into it. It's your energy. So even if you have the same ideas, it's never going to be the same because you both don't have the same energy. If that answers your question. <laughs> yes, it does. Again, no, it, again, it does completely. Awesome. Absolutely. <laughs> I, ha I have a similar thing. I've had it happen where I'll have an idea and I won't act on it and then someone else will do it. And I'm just yes. like, wow, look at that. And usually there's some sort of an element of like, well, I did have a great idea. I just don't have a $20 million worth of resources to put in that <laughs> idea. And they did. And good for them because it was that kind of an idea. Isn't that exactly. the worst when you have like that idea that you just need $100 million and it would just be, you would just. <laughs> all the time, all the yeah. time. And there's that. a quote. There's a quote that I always tell everyone I love this quote and I always forget who told it to me or where I read it from but um the quote basically states that every idea that is out here or maybe every idea that you have someone else already had it that you may not even know about someone yeah. is currently creating that same idea the same time as you or someone is going to create that idea in the future without even knowing that you had the same idea so nothing is new under the sun, right? Everything is always connected. And that, that quote right there, that affirmation that I always tend to say often, that actually helped me tremendously to know, oh, okay, well, you know, someone's going to have this idea. Maybe they'll flourish with it. You know, maybe me thinking about it and me writing out a business plan for it and may yeah. put that energy out there for someone else to do so. So, it may you know, come through your lens. I get that. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And it would be expressed differently. We, there was always that. I was in the uh, film industry for a long time, and, and a lot of people like held on to these ideas. And all the good producers I would work with would be like, tell everybody your ideas. Pitch it constantly. That was such a better way to go. I have a question for you because you're talking about the ethers and the sort of, you know, this kind of idea that all of these ideas are already out there. There is no time. Like, it's all there. Some of my best ones ever have felt like downloads, less like I was thinking and more like boom. And United We Own, in a form way different than it is currently, because it's evolved and, and thank God I have my partner Jenny here to <laughs> help shape it, because it came through a lens of somebody very focused on capitalism at the time. And so it really came out through that lens. And so my question is, is 
do you feel like that sometimes, like they are downloaded and that they are coming from somewhere? Um, and then how do you tap into that? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, hmm. I feel like downloads come like a, like downloads are actually a part of like your intuition, right? They're definitely connected because the downloads can come from like the universe, um, the, your ancestors, your spirit guides, right? All these different like entities can be a part of um, what you think and what you feel intuitively, right? And so I believe your downloads come at the best times when you are still and when you are not like, you know, your mind is not everywhere. Your mind is not a chatterbox, right? And so for me, I feel like the best way to to go into that and to to really gather that information is to understand where those downloads are coming from, right? Sometimes we may not know we're confused on where they're coming from, but let's just say they're coming from our spirit guides, right? Certain spirit guides that we uh, connect with on a daily basis, right? Uh, my family's from Haiti, so we have uh, what we call loas. Loas are spirits, spirits who um, who we connect with. And so, if I am connecting with a specific spirit guide, and I know that spirit guide governs herbs, governs the crops, mm -hmm. governs um, the land, right? And I have a download that pertains to that. What I would do is I would give thanks to, to that particular spirit guide because I know that my connection with that spirit guide is helping me to receive these particular downloads. And it's the same thing with the elements, right? If you think about the spirit guides that are connected with the elements, you have um, certain spirit guides that govern the water, right? And so what is water? Water is all about the flow, okay? And for women, water, the water element in itself is connected to the womb. So when I'm working with women in particular, and I'm, you know, focused on their womb healing, what I would do is I would ask them, you know, what spirit guide do you work with? Whatever culture that you're a part of um, that deals with water. And then I would have them tap into that particular spirit guide so that they can show their gratitude for, um, you know, the work that the spirit guide is doing and how to better connect with them. So, you know, the downloads, they come from different aspects. It's just up to you to figure out um, sometimes where you may think, because we don't necessarily know, right? But we can feel it. We can feel and, and, and tell ourselves, okay, well, perhaps it is a part of um, or coming from this direction. And that's, and when you do that, you can honestly tap into that energy and then it'll take you to where you need to be. Mm. I could just listen to you. I could talk with you. That's why whenever <laughs> I call you, we end up on the phone for like an hour. I know. Now. I, I know. never want to say goodbye to you. I know. <laughs> uh, I just want, wow. I'm feeling like whenever I speak to you, Tamika, where I feel like this is going to be over and then I'm going to look around at everything in like a whole different way <laughs> with so many new <clears throat> ideas about like, I'm just, my eyes are just in. Suddenly noticing house. a lot of colors in the I'm house. noticing colors. I'm thinking about like the sources of my intuition. I, okay. So this is another one of those where like, we're going to have to talk again. Um, in this format because like there's no way that like we could be done sh you know with you sharing uh after one hour i um i do have something if we can zig a little bit that i have just personally been wanting to talk with you about that i feel like would be great right now which is art the connection between art which as soon as we started talking about color um I was like, oh yes, this is what I want to talk with Tamika about. And this realm of stillness, intuition, and mindfulness. Um, I feel like there's been a, I know that you have done lots of programming in different ways having to do with art from face painting to art projects. I'll share that it's something with United We Own that whenever a teacher has kind of brought it in on their own it's been wildly successful meaning that it's embraced it's really like a powerful tool and I would love to hear you talk a little bit about like for you where is that connection 
And how could we see the wellness, you know, yoga, mindfulness, you know, how, like, where's a channel where we can start embracing more the power of the connection between art and mindfulness? Mm, you guys have such awesome questions. It's like, you're so amazing. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> so nice to ask you. That's a great question. So when I hear the word art, I used to think of coloring, you know, painting. And then when I got older, I realized that art can be so many things. And art actually comes in a lot of different forms, right? Yoga is an art. Cooking is an art. Uh, of course, painting, drawing is an art, but because we grow up in in a school system that only focuses on the um, mm-hmm. the artistic painting, drawing, sketching, very um, traditional, the, classical right. expressions. Yeah, and and I think because we grow up in that, we we tend to associate the word art with only those things. And Absolutely. so if we if we break out of that. Um, just break out of that that thought system and start looking at everything as a form of art, whether it's a beautiful car, whether it's the beautiful trees or the environment that you're in or the body of water that you see, right? Um, Nature has really taught us and showed us what art really is because man, I mean, no man here like created any of this, right? This was here. And so the universe, you know, what, however, the higher beings, right? God, whatever it is that you associate yourself with or the higher energy that has created all of this, that is art. And that's what I try to look for as far as um, the connection between like art and mindfulness is defining what you think art is and then mm-hmm. connecting it to how it helps you through your mind, body, and soul. And when you start to do that, I feel like um, it helps you to, well, it helps me, I should speak for myself. It helps me to connect with children on a deeper level. It also helps me to connect with um, my clients on a deeper level. And so you think about the word mindfulness. What is mindfulness? Mindfulness is all about how do you, not necessarily holistically, but how do you connect with your your mind um, and your soul, right? Mm -hmm. In a way that helps you to stay calm, Um, it, 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 it gives you a sense of peace. It gives you a sense of harmony. Right. And so mindfulness, you can find mindfulness in, in multiple things. Mindfulness is is sort of like an act, right? You have art, which is something that you see and what you feel. Um, but then you also have mindfulness that takes you to a deeper level of, um, like how, how is it that you, how, how do you connect with this world? How do you connect with everything? Right. And so, I, I taught a lot of art classes to children. Uh, most of the art classes would eat, was eco art. It was eco friendly art, um, summer camp, eco art, you know, classes and art classes. And what I did is I brought in the the color scheme of chakras and also with um, meditation into art, right? So I would teach them. Um, you know, that art is a form of meditation, right? When you're focused on something and you're drawing and you're painting or you're sculpting or you're creating, right? Your mind is focused on making this thing um, what you want it to be from what's inside of here, right? Mm -hmm. So when you're connecting art with mindfulness, right? It's all about what, how you feel and how you exude those type of feelings into what you're doing or what you're creating, And that creation can be anything. That creation can be, like I said, it can be yoga. It can be meditation. It can be cooking. It can be um, sculpting. There's so many different forms of art, right, when we think about it. So whatever it is that you're feeling, whatever it is that you exude, that's what you create in order to um, create this artistic, you know, I have to use those words because that's all we have, (laughs) to use... um, you know, your artistic and creative skills to form whatever it is that you're feeling. Okay. So it's, it's all about like, what you're feeling. That's, that's how it starts. And then that's how it's formed. You know, wow. hearing you say that, I'm thinking about um, how powerful it, it must be, especially for people that learn in different ways to um, see like a, a, an expression of what they're exuding. Like so, sometimes I think like mm. when there's so much going on, 
I sometimes, before I would like, like you said, really had that mental discipline. And even now, sometimes when I get overwhelmed, I have a really hard time even putting my finger on like, what's going on with me and hearing you describe, you know, any act as an artful act where you're, what you're exuding is kind of like what you see manifested there. I'm thinking mm -hmm. about how clear of a channel that probably could create to like see that there, you know, like that came from me and that like reflects back to me where I'm at right now. That's so brilliant. Yes. Yes. You said it so perfectly. <laughs> I'm just, I like, I'm just reflecting you. Ladies, <laughs> you always say to me. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, um, it's a connection. It's, uh, think about how you're feeling and it brings me back to also colors, you know, yeah. um, if you are feeling a particular type of way, if you're feeling, let's just use sadness and, um, and depression, you know, cause a lot of, uh, folks around this time around the pandemic are experiencing that. So, you know, if you are feeling depressed, if you're feeling sad, if you're feeling any type of like anxiety, um, you know, being around an environment that has particular colors, you want to be number one aware of that because when you're depressed, where do you usually stay? You're in your room, you know, you just want to be by yourself. You're in one particular area because you don't want to see outside people. Like you, you don't want to do a lot. Right. And so if you're in a dark space, if you have a lot of grays, if you have a, even black, sometimes if you have um, a lot of those, um, uh, those like dark colors, it's going to put you into that state, right? Mm -hmm. So being mindful of that, but also when you're trying to get out of that, right? Be mindful of your emotional state and your mental state when you're doing that. Ask for help, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's the hardest thing to do when you're in that type of um, emotional state is asking for help because you don't want to be a burden on anyone or you feel like you are or sometimes you feel like uh, the people that you want to ask, they're not going to be there for you, right? So always go to nature and ask. And if you can't ask any physical person, then ask nature. I am mm. telling you, anytime you go out in nature and you just ask questions, go talk to a tree. It might sound yes! crazy to some people, but I'm telling you, you speak to flowers, you speak to trees, you speak to you speak to the elements, right? Speak to the animals. There, there's always going to be something that's going to spark you, right? But you have to trust. You have to trust yourself that you will get out of this, right? In a in a in a safe space and in a healthy way. But you have to trust yourself and trust nature. If you can't trust anyone else, even yourself, you can't trust yourself. Trust nature because nature never lies nature is never deceitful nature tells you how it is mm -hmm. and it's up to you to receive it that way so you know being mindful of the colors being mindful of um the people that you keep around you right because sometimes the people that you keep around you they they're not healthy right they, they you're not in a healthy relationship with them or relation with them to get you out of a state right so your environment the colors that are around you um, your, the, the people that you keep around you, right? And also the foods that you eat, that is also important. When we're depressed, what do we do? We binge eat on junk food, okay? Yeah. So, and usually the same color scheme you've been talking about, like the browns and the grays and the sort of, cookies, you know, this, like, yep. black cookies, of the rainbow. Chips. Yep. Yeah, you, know you need a red pepper. You eat red chips? Not really, <laughs> unless they're like, I don't know, red hot chips or something. But yeah. you, you don't eat fruits and vegetables when you're depressed. Like, who does that, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> you no, always, celery I, I is not that. my go-to. I love that you said that, Matt, because I didn't even think about that. I didn't think about, like, when you are in a depressed state, the colors of the food that you gravitate towards is actually, mm -hmm. like, darker foods. Yeah. And I find a, that that ends up with the seasons as well. Because, you know, yeah. I, I eat a lot of carrots and raw vegetables. And then suddenly as that shift starts to come where the cold comes in and the change of the colors everywhere, I, I, I find I'm suddenly eating very earthy toned foods, dark greens. And yes. I'm going back into those sort of like the, the, the harvest, I guess. I'm not sure, but I start to eat a lot of brown. No, no, you're, you're right. <laughs> you're right. You have your pumpkins. You have your... Yeah. Um, you know, the acorns, you have all, even in nature, you know, yeah. nature, even though the leaves are turning those bright colors, right? 
think about that shift, right? Nature knows what, what it's doing. We went from a summer season that has all these bright colored flowers and amazing bright things. The sun is bright. And they were moving slowly into a darker, darker time. The nights are getting shorter and, you know, um, the leaves are, are leaving, you know, the branches. And think about the transition from fall to winter. Fall is giving you that last bit of like bright colors, right? On mm -hmm. the leaves. And then it slowly moves into the winter time. So it's preparing you. It's also preparing you for the rooted vegetables that you're going to be eating, right? Like you said, Matt, a lot of darker colors. But, and you know, darker colors doesn't necessarily mean a bad thing. It just means that we are transitioning into a time of stillness and calmness and hibernation. And so bright colors, what does that do? It overstimulates you, right? Mm -hmm. You don't want to be overstimulated during the winter time. We want That's to- not in line with- Yeah. Like, like, that. But that's the fruits and of... berries, and that's the summer, and that's it's... all of those bright and energetic, and it's you know, got that tower tower. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Versus, exactly. like you're saying, the pumpkins and the gourds and the the dark kales and things like that, which I find for a lot of times they 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 make you more sedentary. There's a heavier weight to them. There's a yeah, um, it's it's, it almost feels like my body is having more uh, more to do as it's digesting this food and kind of turning it into the magic. Right, right. So it's always good to like go with the flow of nature never mm -hmm. nature never lies right nature is always guiding us right and nature will always be here even when we're gone right there yeah. nature will be here so why not follow the suit and why not follow the flow of who was here before us right we do that for our ancestors we do that for our spirit guides right but nature is a mm -hmm. part of that energy and so as we transition to our winter season this is the time of what they call like darkness. And this is the time of depression and, um, you know, uh, seasonal, you know, depression and, and things like that. But we have to know how to handle that. There's ways to handle that so that we don't get or we don't dive deep into that depressive, lower vibrational self. This is a good time. It's not always a time of depression. It's a good time to just, number one, be still. Number two, just um, tap into your root chakra energy, right? eating more rooted vegetables, things like that, right? It's all, it's all connected. And being able to journal a lot, being able to self-reflect, being able to, um, you know, think about uh, what we're going to do or what we're going to plant, right? The seeds that we're planting right now are what is going to flourish in the springtime, right? But that goes the same with us. What are we planting for ourselves right now in the, in the fall and in the winter so that the moment that the spring comes and the flowers are blooming and the colors are blooming, we're doing the same exact thing. But we need time to think. We need time to be still. We need time to, um, to uh, think about what has been going on for the past year. You know, what do we need to change? What do we need to shift? All of these things happens in the wintertime. Um, hence why the bears also <laughs> yeah. hibernate, you know? So there, there's so many different ways that we can look at it, but nature is what the blueprint is, right? Nature is, is the guide. Oh my God. Become my guide, that's for sure. Amazing. Mind blowing. As expected. Amazingness. <laughs> Anyone who tuned in because they do, you kind of knew what they were going to get. No, but, but I have to say, you know, there were so many questions and things that I had like in my mind like what do I want to ask Tamika I have her and it's not a programming conversation I can ask her anything and yet <laughs> I am totally blown away and amazed at the direction that this conversation went in completely unexpected I learned so much that I had no idea that I needed to know and now I'm like oh my gosh I needed to know that Thank you so much for, I know everybody watching is probably feeling now and in the future feeling what I'm feeling, which is so grateful for all the time that you've spent being still and receiving these messages and organizing them in a way that it's so easy for you to explain to us because I feel like I just got I like a doctorate in one hour of all the things that I'm not tapping into yet that have the so much potential. So before, okay, so we were so excited to talk to you. We never actually introduced you or <laughs> let you introduce yourself because <laughs> we were so excited. So 
even better now because I'm sure everybody watching at whatever moment they're watching is like, where do we find you? So please <laughs> tell everybody where to find you and what you're up to and all of that. Yes, yes, of course. And I want to thank you all for this uh, platform. I mean, I, I love connecting with you all. So to connect with you all, plus your community and, you know, my community, I feel like that's amazing. So thank you all for inviting me on here. <laughs> Thank you for coming. It has yeah. been an inspiring conversation. Yes, wow. for sure. For reciprocity, of course, reciprocity. <laughs> um, so my name is uh, Tamika Albertini. Um, I am a, a holistic uh, plant-based nutritionist. I'm also a holistic wellness uh, consultant. Um, so I offer, you know, consultations, holistic wellness consultations that taps in, into the mind, the body, and the soul in order to heal. I am also a color therapist. So everything that I do, whether it's the readings or um, consultations or room work or working with women, um, I always connect colors to everything that I do because I feel like it's a, 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 an important piece that a lot of folks tend to miss. And there's so much that you can do with connecting with it that will help you and push you into the direction that you want to go into. And because I love what I do, I'm like, I have to incorporate it in, in everything just to uh, provide insight on um, the color energy and what it exudes and what it doesn't exude. So mm -hmm. I have a company called uh, Sacred Color Healing. And I have a studio in uh, Brooklyn, New York, in uh, the Park Slope area. Yeah, we haven't made a year yet, but we'll make a year next year. So yeah, I'm excited yeah. about that. Yeah. Um, my company has been around for three years, but our studio is about, I would say, like seven, eight months. And um, if you're in the New York area, if you're um, in the surrounding New York City or New Jersey area, uh, you can, you know, uh, click my link in the bio and you'll be able to see where we're located in the Park Slope area. Um, there we provide readings. We provide color and chakra readings. We also provide um, a crystal light therapy bed. And basically you're laying on thousands of crystals that oh. um, are, um, they're aligned to each chakra center. And it's a heated pad. So as you're laying on this bed, um, the heat actually emits negative ions into your aura, but also into your body to help you to relax, to get into a better state. And so not only wow. are you healing your back <laughs> chakras, you're also healing your front chakras with the lights that are shooting out from um, clear quartz crystals. And they are pointed to each chakra center to help you to align your aura and also to help you to align your chakra center. Uh, we have binaural beats, so you're listening to a uh, frequency sound. Um, you're also um, uh, dealing with aromatherapy, so any aromatherapy that you have um, or that you feel connected to, we also provide that. Um, there are, yeah, there, there, you have to look at the uh, website. The full five cents experience. Everything that we provide. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it all is. five it's cents. A, are it's tapped. a divine. Yeah, it's a divine, divine experience. And not only that, um, I also offer color chakra readings. So it's card readings. Um, and right now, we're actually going to start offering Yoni Steams. So Yoni Steaming is a, something that, um, I mean, it's so popular right now. But I grew up in a home where, uh, you know, after birth, you know, this is what the elders did for the um, the women who, you know, just gave birth. And so I I connected that and I said, oh, I, I would love to do that. But now it's so popular because it's a healing aspect for women who go through a lot, um, even when they're not giving birth. You know, if they have any type of um, issues um, in the womb, in the vagina area, um, the Yoni Steams actually really, really does help to provide the herbal remedies in order to clear anything up. So we will start offering that. Uh, we offer holistic wellness consultations. So you can come on a call with us. Um, you can come on a discovery call for 20 minutes just to figure out, hey, what, what, what do I do? Like, what service do I choose? And then we'll go over that. Um, or you can go on uh, the website to book a holistic wellness consultation. And you also receive a um, custom tea blend with that consultation. So we go over, you know, all the ailments that you have and, you know, we go on a Zoom call and we speak about it 
And once we're finished with that, we we create basically together a customized herbal blend for you in order to tackle those particular ailments that you have. Um, I can go on and on, but uh, oh, most I of this... Get you back down to <laughs> I know, I need to... I'm going most... to be <laughs> I know, I know. Most of the services that we have, I, I just listed, um, but we also have an apothecary, a color apothecary. So we have powders, we have uh, tea blends, we have uh, protein powders, uh, but again, everything is connected to color. Oh yeah. my gosh. Well, this could go on and on. I still have a 12 <laughs> question. So we're going to have to get <laughs> around to you, but this has been just wonderful. And we know uh, as an entrepreneur, uh, I'm sure we're probably five minutes thank over you your next call. Us <laughs> but really, it has been absolutely wonderful to connect with you. And thank you so much. This has been truly inspiring. I mean, I know for both of us. And oh. so uh, we're, in the, we're in the process of putting together a, a house. And um, so I know that I would love to to hire you to, to help us with some of the colors. And I could just see Jenny, as you were talking, she's like looking at the room. And unfortunately there's been several years of my influence. So there's lots of grays and things. And I think Jenny would like to, to spark that up. So we should talk about that aside oh, from this, but God. this has been wonderful. Go be magical. Tamika, go thank be you. Connect with Tamika. Everybody. We love you. <laughs> thank you so much. I appreciate it. And I would take up that offer. Just let me know. Uh, thank you for sharing your energy. Thank you for always being consistent. Thank you for being such beautiful souls. I am so happy to connect with you. I'm so happy that I was able to receive my Karma Yoga, um, you know, certification from you all. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm just amazed at the work that you all continue to do, and I'm I'm extremely happy to be a part of it. Oh, oh thank oh you. My that gosh. is very very yeah. generous of you. As always, <laughs> we, we treasure you and everybody that joined us today, new friends to us. And just this was magnificent hour. So be well, Tamika. Be well, everybody. We're sending our Have love. Have a blessed day. Thank you. Bye. 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 <laughs>